When I look upon his face, the one who saved me by his grace, and when he takes him by the hand and leads me through the promised land, what a day, glorious day that will be. Well, thank you so much for listening in early this morning to that beautiful song by His Own, and uh, their recording at Faith Music Mission from Evansville, Indiana. And uh, I hope you will take advantage of the, all the beautiful music they have. Go online, find them, find out how you can have that music. 100% of everything they've produced coming right to your phone on as-needed basis, anytime you want to listen. And uh, that'd be a great thing. Well, we're talking this week on reading your Bible or how to read your Bible. You know, that's, a, that's an amazing uh, an amazing idea or amazing thought. You say, well, preacher, don't you just read it like you read any other book? Well, not exactly. It, and uh, Certainly, you have to read words uh, one at a time and, and go through it like that. But on this beautiful February day, here we are, February the 3rd. It's Wednesday now. And uh, uh, 2021, and we're in the month of love, I suppose, February. And uh, the heart and Valentine's Day coming down the road here pretty quick. It's all going to be fun and exciting, and I'm looking forward to that. Well, we've talked about reading the Bible with some specific things in mind as you read the Bible to help you be able to absorb it and to remember it and to maybe share it with others. Uh, perhaps you're a Bible teacher or a preacher like myself, and, and you want to have a good handle on the Bible. So it's not just a book you sort of skim over or scan. It's something that you want to get into your life. You want it to become part of your life, part of your very being, and get it in your brain, get it in your memory banks, and uh, have it in there that the Holy Spirit can draw up some things and use it. We talked about reading the Bible confidently, called, uh, reading the Bible thoughtfully, reading the Bible consistently, reading the Bible thoroughly, and uh, how important that is, that we read the Bible thoroughly. I talked about this last thing we talked about yesterday, and uh, think about thoroughly. Here's a verse in Acts chapter 20, verse 27, for I have not shunned to declare unto you all the counsel of God. And someone said, read it from the index to the concordance, from generations to revolutions, all the way through, read the Bible front to back. And uh, make a practice. Maybe you've never read the Bible through. It'd be a good thing to do. Well, today I hope to give you number five and number six. And number five, the, I like this one. Read the Bible unselfishly. You know, the gospel came to you on the way to somebody else. The word of God came to you on the way to somebody else. We sing a song in church sometime. Make me a channel of blessing. And sometimes we got the channel all block, uh, blocked up. We don't want the Bible to have that much influence on us. We don't want it to change our lives. And we're a little bit embarrassed or shy about sharing some Bible truth that we found with someone else. In 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse number 17, the Bible says, For we are not as many which corrupt the word of God, but as of sincerity. 
in the sight of God, but as of sincerity, as of God, in the sight of God, listen to this now, here's a phrase, we speak Christ. So I'm not just taking the Bible in, I'm also speaking it, I'm giving it out. And uh, I believe that's what God wants us to do. He wants us to be unselfish, to share Bible principles with our children. You know, a lot of children grow up in homes where they never hear the Bible talked about or quoted. Or when dad or mom tells the kids, here's you're going to do something because it's right and you're doing wrong. They never open a Bible and show them a Bible verse where God said it was wrong. And they never show them how to make it right. And how, how important that is. So read the Bible unselfishly. Be ready to share it. Share it with your family. Share it with your children. And uh, then let it be seen in your life as you live it out. And then where the, when God opens an opportunity, say you can tell someone, well, you know, uh, the Bible says, and then quote a verse. And uh, let, that, let God use you as you allow the Word of God to flow through you. So read the Bible unselfishly. Listen to this verse, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse number 2. But we have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the Word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. So we're not hiding it. We're, we're, we're not just trying to be crafty or, or handle the word of God deceitfully. And we're renouncing those hidden things and we're making it open and obvious, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. Listen, don't twist the application just to win your way. Don't try to use the Bible as a, as a whipping post to, to, to uh, uh, win an argument or something like that by twisting it a little bit, making it mean what you want it to mean. Read the Bible for what it is and explain it for what it says and apply it in your life. Just take God at his word. And as you apply the Bible in your own life, don't be ashamed to share it with other people. Why you live the way you live, why you have off limits, why there are certain places you won't go, why there are certain types of uh, programs on the television and certain things on the internet, on the computer or the iPhone or whatever that you just refuse to look at and be involved in because the Bible says, and there you go, you can put it to work, read the Bible, unselfishly. Then number six, the, the second one today, read the Bible discriminately. Read it discriminately. And in other words, be sure that you think it through and compare scripture with scripture. Don't, don't just read a verse, then take it out of context and make it say what you want it to say. Second Timothy chapter two, verse number 15 says this, study to show thyself approved unto God. Now the first word is a word that takes a little bit of commitment, takes a little bit of character to not just read the Bible, but stop and study. Get a good concordance. Look to see where that word that you are puzzled by uh, is found in other places in the Bible. Uh, find out what the Greek or Hebrew, most concordances also tell you what the Greek word or the Hebrew word is and what it means in other and how it's used in other places in the Bible. And so get you a good concordance, but study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. So uh, rightly dividing, rightly dividing the word of truth. So God says, you got to work at this thing. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And I challenge you, get the word of God in your life that way. See, taking the Bible out of context is a pretext. You can't take a verse or a partial verse that seems to contradict the whole Bible and build a doctrine out of it. That's how the cults get started and why false doctrine abounds in many circles today. We just don't need that. In our good, sound, Bible-believing New Testament churches, we just need to let the Bible say what it says, and we need to amplify it through our lives and let God use us for his glory. We need to work at it, and I challenge you to do it. Read the Bible discriminately. Well, we're going to pray here a moment. And uh, then we're going to slip out. But I want to thank you for watching and listening today. And I hope you will hit that share button. If you have a comment, please make it. 
I mentioned yesterday that anyone has a, any Bible questions, just send it to me. In the next week or two, I'll try to deal with that question if I can. And uh, I don't know everything, but I know a few things. I'll be glad. I, I know some people I can ask. If I don't know the answer, I can get the answer, I believe. And uh, yeah, a lot of times the answer could be, I don't know. <laughs> you know just, just take God and his word. Just believe him. Well, let's pray together and we'll be on our way. Heavenly Father, thank you for loving us. Thank you for watching over us. And uh, Lord, I thank you for the word of God. Help us, Lord, to be good students of your word. And we pray in Jesus' name, amen. Now, don't forget to tune in tomorrow morning, 10 a.m.